Welcome to a very special episode of Do Human Work, the podcast that looks at the future of cybersecurity through the lens of AI. And I'm your host, Nate Burke, but instead of just throwing it to Lior like I always would, or Yonatan, instead, we've got breaking news. If you're watching this, we are just today announcing that 7AI has raised a $130 million Series A, the largest cybersecurity round A in history. So today I'm joined by Lior, I'm joined by Yonatan to talk about what this means, to talk about the fact that we launched the company just 10 months ago, and now we're making this big announcement. So the big question is, what does this mean? So Lior, Yonatan, welcome to a very special edition of Do Human Work. Thank you, Nate. We're happy that you're doing human work. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for having us, Nate. Let's start with the news itself. $130 million Series A led by Index Ventures with Blackstone as a new investor with all of the other investors participating. This is the largest cybersecurity A round in history. Take us through what this moment means for 7AI. Okay, it, it's a very special day for us. Um, and to be honest, before we're diving into what is uh, about 7AI, I want to say thank you to our, our investors. Uh, it's not just the Index and Blackstone as the new investors. We have Greylock, CRV, and Spark, our uh, basically investors that supported us in the seed round. Uh, and for us, it's a special moment because you get this uh, um, feeling from your investors that they believe in the future of where you're taking the company. And believe is very important, uh, specifically in this stage, because it's not just about the technology. It's about the technology. It's about what we're building, the type of people that's surrounding us right now, and we're sitting in our Boston office. Um, and to be honest, the most important one is our customers, the people that they are not just, hey, believe in the technology, they're actually testing the technology in their environment. So when you're building a massive company like uh, we're building right now, it's really about, um, if you think about it, it's about a big vision that we have to have, and then you have to have a very clean execution <clears throat> into this vision. And for us, we understand that the bad guys are going to leverage AI for sure, and they already start doing it. And the question is what the good guys are going to do with it. So we're, we're really thinking about it, fighting fire with fire, giving kind of the power of AI into the hands of those defenders that their job is to protect massive organization out there. Uh, I think that right now we reach a point that we managed to prove, and I'm pretty sure that Jonathan is going to talk about it, uh, about the, the level of complexity in the technology and the level of accuracy that we managed to bring this technology. I think this is a, a extremely unique moment for 7AI. Over the last year, we have built a technology that proves beyond any doubt that you can take AI and bring it to being trustworthy and working in production in, in from small to very, very large global, global 500 companies, 7500 companies, and solve cybersecurity problem in a consistent way, in a predictable way, in a, in a way that you can essentially sleep and let the AI take over your cybersecurity problem for you. That's a huge monumental moment because for the last two years, we've been asking ourselves, will AI do it? Well, everyone says it, it's inevitable. It will happen sometime. But it wasn't clear if sometimes is now or sometimes in the future. With our customers and the team that build an amazing technology, we've proven that this time is now. We are able to deliver for our customers consistent 24 by 7 results that are superior to what even their own team were able to do before, let alone outsourcer or other human-based approaches. So it not only can AI get sort of in the right area, it can do the job and, and, and solve the problem for you, allowing you to have your team focus on more important things. For 7AI, this is a very, very big proof of that statement because our customers who have helped us during this round in testimony after testimony confirm that, yes, this is consistently working. And I think that's a huge thing, that that complete proof is a huge statement on behalf of our customers and our investors on what 7AI has built and what 7AI will be building over the next couple of years. Jonathan, I, I think that um, if you really think about it, it's, uh, and I'm smiling because people were told us, it's like, yeah, AI is inevitable. But the question is, can I trust it? So some people are asking us, you know, what does it mean that I can trust AI to do something for me? 
I think it's a great question. We've seen over the last year with an inflection of companies in almost every space, how quote unquote easy it is to slap an AI on things. Yeah. And it's misleadingly simple. You use using something AI, you give it a couple of easy examples and it looks great. It's and like you, uh, you're driving in your neighborhood uh, or in your parking lot. Exactly, it's like an autonomous vehicle in a parking lot controlled environment. But then when you go in, into the real world, these things fall flat. And they fall flat because the world is complex and, and not clean and, and nuanced. And in cyber, it's even worse because there's an adversary who's actively trying to make sure you don't find us. And what we have done over the last year is, is essentially built a program end-to-end -end that tells us how do you implement our AI, our agent architecture, with our Plaid model, the people at AI Driven Adoption that can make the AI do consistently what you want it to do yeah. every so, so time out, you, you just said it in passing and I think that uh, this is a very important kind of lesson that we, we learn through the uh, year and a half that we are building this company. Um, in the past, when you were doing a POC, basically usually you were comparing apple to apples. It's like this endpoint versus that endpoint to see this you know, cloud protection versus that cloud protection, feature by feature. But while doing it um, in environment, I think that the great uh, thing that I, I learned from you, you said it's like testing AI in your parking lot, uh, it's a one thing, but then when you unleash it into the wild, you have to keep testing it and you need to validate and almost kind of oversight that that thing works. And that was kind of the genesis of the Plaid model. C can you elaborate about that thing? So Plaid model for people-led AI-driven essentially means that we're not just throwing a product on our customers. No, we're, we're essentially building a new wave in software engineering in that the product, the final step, needs to match Mr. Customer the way they want to work, the way the customer wants the outcome to be delivered and to be performing it within their environment. So when we engage with a customer, we're not questioning, will the tech work? We are have our people adapt to the program to make sure it works in your environment for you end to end. This is a radically different way of doing software development. As a, as, a, as a CTO, we used to build software in our engineering department, ship it over the fence to our customers, chat with them every now and then to make sure it works. The new model in the AI age is wholly different. We deploy the product, we customize the product, we teach the AI your environment, we make sure it knows you, it knows your context, it knows the customer, and it knows how to solve the problem in your environment with your tools that you have them. But it's not a one-time process, a continuous evolution of running the, making the AI constantly better and constantly more adapted to your environment, to this individual scenario it has to solve for. That's a huge shift in how you write software, how you build software, and of course how you consume software on our customer side. Yeah, I think that one of the big things that we saw, it's, and you said it, it's about delivering an outcome. And some people are getting confused between kind of what, what does it mean to deliver an outcome versus delivering a features. And I think that the, the great explanation is when you deliver a feature, it's doing a very specific thing. And if AI is changing or the world is changing, as we saw it right now changing a lot, you're still stuck with the feature that has been de developed like a half a year, two years ago. And the only option for you is to hope for a new feature to arrive or kind of uh, buying new software. And when we're saying, hey, we're delivering an outcome, actually we're saying, forget about how we are doing it. We're gonna guarantee that this kind of uh, consistency and quality that you're expecting from this you know, machine to deliver, we're gonna make sure that that thing will happen. We just launched out of Stealth February 5th like 10 months ago, it takes companies years usually to get to this kind of round, um, much less the largest A in cybersecurity history. So the big question, why now? What What is so interesting? Why is this such a big round? What's really going on beyond the basics? If you really zoom out for a second, um, we are in an inflection point right now when it's come to AI, agentic AI, and basically everything that has been built so far, specifically in security. And I think that if you really think about it, there is a few things that's happening. One is the bad guy starting to leverage AI. Uh, a year ago it was kind of this started, but right now it's like they're actually leveraging it. 
And we already saw a demonstration of China using AI uh, in order to penetrate to multiple companies. And this is just the thing that we know. And there is a lot of things that we don't know that they're using. So this is one. And the second thing, I think that we reached to a point in time that we managed to build the right architecture around the uh, kind of uh, different models that exist out there in order to extract the value in order to put it into the hands of Fortune 500 companies. Until now, that thing was, was not really there. It's like it's kind of working, and it was a situation that the AI was hallucinating, and I think that we managed to overcome a lot of those problems in order to reach to a point that we have something that is very, very consistent, and people can trust and, and use that thing. Uh, absolutely. Uh, we, we, over the last year, we've seen again and again how we are able to bring our technology to a reliable, consistent, constantly working, 24 by 7, consistently performing what it should be doing accurately. And, and this nuance makes, a lot, makes all the difference in the world. How it's much, so how much, easy. How much time it took us to, to build something? Month of reiteration and reiteration of the architecture. And the thing about AI, it's confusing because it always appears to kind of almost work and you think that you might be a little tweak away. But getting it to work in a security operation center where trust, reliability, accuracy, speed are all so paramount is a monumental task. And we spend so much time and effort in engineering with the brightest and best minds in the, in the industry building our agenda architecture together. But I think more than looking at what we achieved so far, it's important for us to look at where we're going to, going to go from now on. And it's, what we're doing is so much beyond just security operation center. Yeah, yeah I, I think that the, this is fascinating because um, we just built the engine, but we want to go to the moon, yeah, in a sense. So it's like there is many, many components that need to be built. But I think that if you really think about, and you know, you, you, you and me is doing it for, for many, many, many years. We're not going to say exactly how many, many years. years. Well, <laughs> not allowed anyway. No. <laughs> When you think about it, is the job of the defender is protecting big and complex environment. This is an endless 24 by 7 job. It's never ending. It's never ending over the weekend. It's never ending uh, during uh, Christmas or Thanksgiving. And we want to put those people that they are the forefront of kind of the defenders into a position that, that a lot of the non-human work has been done by the AI. And I think that in the past we talked about the human work and non-human work. We're not the company that's saying, hey, we don't need human. It's like, absolutely, we do need people. But we need people to use the brain for the thing that the brain is good at. Complex problem solving. Very complex uh, strategic thinking. Creativity. This is kind of what people need to do. And all the toil, 24 by 7. Uh, the things that we believe, hunting even, we believe that AI can do a very, very thorough job. This is kind of step number one. Usually people will say, it's like, okay, uh, that's what you guys are building. I say, no, no, no. We're actually collapsing the full stack of, if you think about it, is the people operation, is the sore, we think about it as the glue into where the data is. And the data, it, this is kind of the storage, the seam. Uh, we believe that the future is federated. We believe that data should stay where the data was born. So all of these stack need to be collapsed into a single technology that actually doing it, and then take us further in order to be much more aggressive in the way that we're protecting companies. I, I like the way you position this, because the moment we have the engine that can do the work that humans are doing when they operate the security tools in the environment, now the way we architect all these tools will take a very different shape. So we, we no longer need a centralized kind of hub and spoke model when we put all the data in one sim. We don't need a, a team of engineer building a sword that really tries to predict the, the every possible thing that can go and eventually doesn't do anything, just puts them in a ticket management. The entire stack is now shaped by the capabilities and the outcome you as a customer would want to get to be secure, to be adaptive, to be responsive, to be uh, predictive ahead of the ahead of the curve. These are all things that are unlocked by the engine. But as you said, we're just getting started, sure. and we're building on top of that more and more capabilities to really collapse the stock, the stock stack end to end. So, what is this announcement? What does this mean 
for customers? What does it mean for security teams that are, are saying this might be something for me? And then finally, what does it mean for someone that is saying, maybe I want to look at 7AI as a, as a place where I could go to work? The obvious one is people that saying, it's like, look, um, the board is pushing me to do something with AI and security. I, I don't know where to start, um, but I know that it's inevitable and it will happen. And I need to a starting point, a jump start. And I need a trusted partner that can take me to kind of the first step or almost baby step. So we're doing this type of deals. And usually over there, we're focusing on a very specific use case. We're not trying to boil the ocean. We're trying to show them that AI can be trusted in their environment in a consistent manner. So this is step number one and kind of um, the most obvious one. Then there is people that I call them, they're believers, but but they don't know how the thing gonna affect them. Uh, so you can bucket that thing in a SOC optimization. So they have good people, they have 24 by seven eyes on glass, but they don't wanna hire more people and they want the people that they have to make sure that optimize what they do. They don't want them to keep doing kind of the toil work. So over there, what we're doing, we're creating a layer between the people and the technology. And this is kind of seven AI in between and basically enable 7AI to take the 24 by seven investigation and update it, their ticketing system. So by the time that their people are coming and looking at the ticket, basically 7AI did all the work for them. They can validate, check the box and move on. We see the improvement of the time to response, moving to minute versus hours and sometimes days. So this is bucket uh, number two. And the, the third one is people that saying, you know what, I don't have, even have the people in order to do the 24 by seven. Basically over there, we're taking the 24 by seven operation for them and letting AI, when we're doing it, we're not just unleashing the AI and saying, hey, AI, you do whatever you want. We have an oversight capability. We call it the Plaid a team, people-led, AI-driven. This is the group that's making sure that the AI is doing what the AI is supposed to do, that it's not you know, deviating, that the result is consistent, the outcome for the customer is the right outcome. And basically making sure that uh, the AI is not just providing these minutes of response, making sure that that thing is consistent over years and, and, and days and, and weeks. So you know, what about uh, for people that are thinking, hey, this might be a place I should uh, look to come work at? It's a, great, it's a great question. So naturally, 7AI with this funding is planning to grow aggressively. And we're looking for the top skills in every field, from engineering, sales, engineering, product managers, marketers. If you are top notch, really top of your game, come and talk to us. Who are the people that, we, so we are in Boston, headquarter, and when we're saying headquarter, everybody actually coming to the office every day. Um, but I think that we have people from AWS, from Microsoft, from ITER, from Lincoln Lab, from NSA, shh, don't say it, uh, <laughs> from, different branches of the army here. So I think that by now we have a representative from every uh, uh, special forces that exist here in the US. So we're not just hiring special forces people, but definitely it's a plus. We are looking for the best people, especially people who are coming here to be with us to build the future. And this is a combination of drive, the ambition to build something that is really category defining in, in, in one of the most unique times in software development history. Like, this is a revolution that is bigger than almost every other revolution we've had so far in technology. It is unlocking the next wave of, of how do we use tech to solve problems. And we are at the front front of doing that in one of the hardest problems, security, security in general. So this is the place for people who are breaking the boundary of what's possible on a day-to-day -day basis. So I think that is a great place to stop. This was a lot of fun, great conversation. Lior, Yonatan. Thank you, and like we always say to everyone, do, do human, human work. work. Do human work. Do human work. I'm gonna say it again. Do human work, because I flubbed it the last time. Do human work. Do human work. <laughs> All right. All episodes of Do Human Work are available at 7ai.com slash podcast on YouTube, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. Please share, subscribe, and if you have suggestions for future guests, let us know at dohumanwork at 7ai.com.